Hi, I'm Paula McCoy, owner of Colors for Earth. We have ceramic products, glass products, and color brush company. Today I'm going to show you some different outlining techniques with our glass products and a quick little um, technique as far as using our bubble art product. All right, let's get to our project. Okay, for today what I want to show you is um, some different tools that we have. These are our piping bottles. Uh, we have one that's for the glass. It's a piping kit, we call it. It comes with two of these black tips. Make sure you can see that. It's angled so that you can basically write with it like a pencil. Okay, it's a very small opening and it's made for something that's a very fine liquid. Okay, and these are our glass piping kits. We also have ones that have a pink and a yellow tip in them and they are larger tips. They're made for more thicker products such as our clay dimensions or our low fire no fire piping paste that we have okay and then we also have a kit that includes just caps and tips and this mainly was for our glass and it just has caps that you can remove the cap on the bottle and add this red cap that the tips fit onto and I'll show you how that works okay here's your tip here's your cap and it's called a lure lock system and it just twists in there just gently with a half a turn don't twist it on any harder because it's hard to get those off okay and then these caps can be put onto uh, bottles so what we want to do is take our outline black take off your cap and we're going to put the red cap on there let me move this out of the way so you can see and then what I've done is attach my uh, bent tip with a half of a twist and then put your pattern under your glass so you've got your glass piece put your pattern under there and with the tip turned to the side you're able to visually see what's coming out of the tip that's what I like about it so we would start and always have a damp paper towel to keep uh, that tip from clogging up I'm going to turn this you always start from the background and what I'm doing is just tracing basically over the lines and you'll notice I'm going away from myself constantly clean that tip or touch to the moist towel the reason I go away is if you scrape towards yourself you're not going to be getting a nice continuous line always turn your work make sure uh, this is the glass outline again always make sure that your lines are touching because basically what you're trying to do is to build a dam to put your color within and if the dam has a hole in it, then your color is going to run out, okay? And you would just continue to basically trace your outline. And you notice how I'm stopping and starting and going from one direction to another. Constantly turn your piece also. Now with the black outline, it is a matte finish when it fires unlike your colors which are a glossy finish so you'll be able to see the difference in them okay I'm gonna kind of fake a little leaf over here on the side and get it in there before I do the rest of my petal start and stop so that I'm not pulling or dragging the product against myself okay so now you have that and then you can just create a center by doing a wavy line and uh, then we can put detail on it later okay now I want you to I don't know if the camera can get this or not um, what I want you to do is to look at the difference this one over here that I did I did um, with our paste this is with our outline this one will be a lower profile as far as an outline this is a more raised dimension and as far as outlining this one with the clay or excuse me with the uh, low far no far piping paste is more raised the student or yourself have a better chance of not going over the line when you're starting to apply your colors in between um, the outline black one okay this one over on this side is a lower profile so when you're flooding your colors in they tend to go over the line you have to be a little more careful both work the same way this one will have a matte finish this one will have kind of a semi matte finish let me show you one 
this particular piece here has the paste as an outline and I don't know if the camera can go in on an area and you can kind of see where it's a matte versus the shiny on the green on the leaves or say on the wings you can see that it's a matte finish okay so that's the difference you can use either one depending on what you have uh, already with your tools that you've got okay so you would we'll let this dry before you come back and start to flood in your colors or do blends so I'm going to prepare my colors and we'll start with our color decoration okay um, now I want to show you how we mix our products up I've got a little palette here with some cups that I've labeled our product comes in these one ounce jars it's dry so what I've done is take out some color put it in you can use a paint well also um, whatever you might have these just work really well um, you add some medium and then with a little spatula tool I'm going to mix that up you'll get more familiar with how much powder to how much medium to add uh, start off by not adding a lot of medium because if you add too much you get it too thin you're going to have to add more of your powder to thicken it up so you will become more familiar with that as you go um, this particular color is a bubble art color that we're going to use later on in a project um, I've got my other colors mixed up you can see that it's still it's kind of like when you're doing a cake you've got um, in the bottom of your little pod here it's dry it's just like flour in the bottom of your bowl when you're mixing a cake up just be sure and really get everything mixed all the granules all the dry product mixed now you see that that's almost like a toothpaste so that's pretty thick I'm gonna add five to six more drops continue to mix thoroughly what we're looking for um, I used to say an Elmer's glue consistency but um, it was brought to my attention some people haven't used Elmer's glue in a while so let's say when you mix it with a tool or a brush or a palette knife that it should drip by the count of two and you can see that it definitely does if you use it thinner it's just going to be uh, less opaque more translucent in your painting okay so I'm going to put the lid back on that one that's not the one I'm going to use right now we actually are going to use um, three different greens and I'm going to show you just some basic mixing and how to paint some leaves now I mixed these uh, earlier and they are ready to go as the product sets it tends to settle in the area even if this product gets absolutely dry it can be reconstituted you just add more of your glass medium to it and it will liquefy so don't ever throw it away and that's the nice thing about these pods as opposed to a paint well where you have to rinse it out and clean it out you can just put the caps on these come back and add more of your medium and you're good to go and you don't waste your product and it makes it more efficient for you so what I'm going to do now is bring my uh, piece that we're going to work on we're going to do a couple of leaves and a couple of different uh, types of painting um, I'm just using a tackle and liner brush it's a uh, stiff brush you can use a soft brush also everybody has their preference okay so you can see kind of how this kind of strings from the pot and it drips by the count of two that's what you're looking for okay I'm going to do one where we just drop and fill pull and puddle um, just solid so that you can just see a solid application so I'm keeping the brush straight upright and just kind of touching the top surface and pushing and pulling the color into place and this would just be for a solid it's not necessarily what I would do on this leaf I'm just showing you a solid application of color if you had one area that you wanted absolutely solid so what I'm doing is meeting uh, up with the outline pushing it to the outline so that I get a nice solid surface and if you look at that if I tilt it I've got a little spot over here that doesn't touch and right here and here and when you lift it up and you have light underneath it that helps show that it is opaque okay if you see an area that's not then you've got it too thin and this is what I like to do so that I get solid opaque colors when I'm doing my painting okay 
Um, then just rinse that brush in water. Everything is water soluble. Uh, these colors are non-toxic and food safe, so they can be used on the top surface. They can be capped if you want, but they are self-sealing and they are glossy when they fire. For instance, this is our chip chart and you can see this is one layer of glass and you can see that they're nice and shiny. You do not have to cap them with another piece of glass. And that's a common thing, a uh, common question that people ask because uh, there are other products out there on the market that you have to lay another piece on it to get a nice shiny surface. You do not with ours, okay? So keep that in mind when you're decorating your glass. Okay, now let's do um, like a two color blend on another one. So I'm gonna take and do the outer area, which would be light. This is a 360 key lime. I'm gonna do about halfway back on that leaf and I'm gonna wipe off the excess on my pod, go reach for my dark color, flood it in next to it and meet up with that color. And then you can just wiggle the color back and forth to variegate. You can pull lines back and forth or you can kind of shimmy. I mean, there's all different ways that you can blend. It depends on how much you want it blended, whether you want to create um, a second color or if you're just looking for uh, like veining. Okay, so I'm gonna wipe my brush off, go back to the light, start on this outside again. And I do a small area at a time because you need to work wet on wet. The colors uh, dry fairly quickly so you don't want to go and do all the light greens on all your leaves and then all the dark. You want to work one leaf. Preferably, I like to work half and half. Uh, if it's a larger leaf, then I split it up into smaller areas. So now you can see where the colors meet. So you can just pull veins like this, or you can literally shake and wiggle and mix the color together. You can pat the color to achieve a third value of green in there so that it's a better transition from one color to another. Okay. All right. And then we're going to do one where we marbleize, which is another one of the techniques I use a lot. Okay. So I'm going to take a different green and I'm going to apply some dots. The dots do not have to be the same size. I'm going to go ahead and do the whole leaf so that you can see. I always start with my lightest color when I do a marbleize. Wipe off the excess. I'm going to grab my dark. And you're basically going to fill in the other areas with the dark. Until you get that completely filled. I'm going to stop when I get to the top here. Okay, now I've lost quite a bit of my light green, so I'm gonna put a little bit of the light green back in my brush, and I'm just gonna swirl or figure eight, like an S shape, and that marbleizes those together. If you need more of one color versus the other, just put it on your brush and drag it through the top surface. Now I'm gonna flip this over so you can see that on the back side, you're not going to see as much of this. And also, when I lifted it up, you can tell that I'm not touching some of the outer areas. All right, very quickly I'm going to show you. See on the back you can hardly see any of that marbleizing, but on the top you can see it. Okay, so I'm going to continue to add the dark. Normally when I work, I'm working on a light board and that's hard to photograph because the light creates a glare, but it helps you it helps the product dry for one thing quicker because of the heat of the bulb and then it allows you to make sure that you're touching your outline as you're working. Okay, so swirl figure S. Okay, I need a little bit more light, so I'm going to grab some light and drag it in here. Okay, so there is the camera, get that, your marbleized leaf. Rinse your brush. Everything's water soluble. Okay, um, same thing would happen if you were working, uh, let's say you wanted just your, you know, your small leaves, you just wanted a light, you can just flood that in. When you touch to the glass and start brushing like that, you can see how thin that is. It's very translucent. 
when you flood the color, drop and fill, pull and puddle, however you want to refer to it, then it becomes solid and opaque. Um, you have to be careful not to get it too solid because you can have uh, pulling back or cracking uh, on the surface if it were to be too heavy. Okay. Okay, now what I want to show you is another application of if you don't want to just do solid painting or painting, you want to have maybe some texture to your piece. Uh, for instance, like on this piece here where I have texture on the background and up here, uh, there's a way to do that uh, and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so what I'm going to use is our Bubble Art product, which is the one I mixed up. I'm going to add a couple more drops of the medium stir it up. It does tend to separate as it sits still, so you need to keep that mixed up as you go, okay? This is a real easy technique. It just, it's a fun technique. Same thing, you're going to drop and fill, pull and puddle those colors into place, push, pull it up next to the outline, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, this is Coarse Clear Frit by Slumpies. It has different sizes. It's tumbled. It's really nice because if you're working with seniors or children, it doesn't have a lot of sharp edges, so it's uh, much easier on the hands uh, to deal with. So what you want to do is take those pieces and drop them on top of the wet color. And because there's different sizes, you may need to lay them out and find pieces that will fit into your space that you've got. Okay, and you're looking, and just push them kind of down in it. The color acts as a glue to hold those in place so that they won't move. It'll dry around it. I like to work like every other one when I'm doing areas, and I do that when I work on my leaves or anything, any areas, because it allows it to dry just enough that you won't have the color uh, move or go over your outline. Um, also, it depends on your outline, whether the uh, earlier we talked about um, you can see that this outline is a dark black. This one is kind of a chalky black. This is the paste, the low fire, no fire piping paste. Okay. It is a thicker or a more raised outline. It builds a taller dam for the colors to go within. This one is your just regular black outline. Okay. It is a matte finish when it's fired. They both pretty much are a matte except for the um, low fire, no fire, it does have a little bit of sheen and the higher you fire it, it would have more of a gloss to it. So continue to find little pieces and fill that in. If for some reason you think it's dried a little bit, you can also come back and just add a little bit around the edges. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just continue around and fill this in and we'll be right back. Okay, so I've went ahead and finished all the petals here, flooded in. Uh, this particular color is Cerulean Bubble Art, and then I've put the little pieces of the Coarse Clear Frit from Slumpies on top of it. And what happens is when this fires, you will see little tiny bubbles underneath each one of the chunks of glass, and then the the piece itself, depending on how hot you fire that, will give you another texture. So it's it's different textures, the bubbles underneath and the texture of the frit being fired um, only to like a 1390, 1400 at the most. Um, and we'll have suggested schedules at the end of this video. Okay, now what I want to go back to, I've also added some of our yellow lemon peel with a little bit of our key lime off to one side on the center of the flowers. Now as you can see here, I've kind of went over the line or it's closed in, the color has closed in over the top of it. So if you ever have that or say you want to add detail, side veining or something else to your piece, you can actually come back and what we have is our detailing black and I've put a little drop out here and what I'm going to do is just slightly thin that out with some water and then just make sure you have a fine brush that you can get a nice point to. And I'm going to go back in and basically just go over that line. And if you want to crisp up any other lines, straighten up, you can do that too. Now, where you use this, you need to be fairly thin because it does create a very shiny 
uh, surface. So if you're going to touch up in one spot, I definitely would say that you need to touch up in areas throughout your design because otherwise it could stand out like a sore thumb. Okay, so I'm going to add some side veins on here just to create some interest. And you can see like right between, I went over my lines and even on this one. Always turn your work as you're working, make it more comfortable to you. This one, the vein seems really good. So um, I might touch up just a little bit here on the edge. And the black is gonna come through a little bit, but not not enough. If you've went over the lines quite a bit, you'll want to touch those up. Um, I would not touch up with the paste or with the outline because it could be a secondary layer and it could roll in the firing. So I like the detail black, plus it's a thinner product and you're able to get um, more detail with it. Okay. Um, you could even, let's say you wanted to do a uh, Zentangle design, which is really popular right now, you could come in here and actually create some type of line work if you wanted to do that even. This is still wet, so I can't do that. Um, if the flowers, uh, petals were dry, which I haven't put anything on this one, you could pull in detailing lines coming out uh, from the center of the flower, like stamens. Um, Okay, and you can also sign with this. This is a good way to sign your projects. And you can come in here and write your name and maybe you want the year also. You can do that too. So it's a way to get very, very fine detail to your uh, designs and create more dimension. Okay, um, one of the other things I want to mention too, we're just painting on the top of the glass here, but you can also paint, I think you can see this, uh, where it's like a soft matte finish. These lines have been painted on the back of the glass. Okay, so you can see on the front, you can see more dimension where you can tell that that color is painted from the back side. And our colors can be put face down. So with this was painted and not been fired, you could lay it face down on your thin fire paper, your shelf paper, and fire it directly on it. It will not stick. If it's a darker color, it might leave some type of a dark impression, but um, it does not stick to the piece, okay? And it doesn't matter what temperature you fire that. It's just another way to get a, another depth. So you've got on this particular piece, you've got the bubbles underneath the frit, you've got the frit for texture, and then you've got um, the secondary level of your design from the back side of the piece, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'll finish this piece and I'll fire it and I'll show it to you in just a bit. All right, thank you.